kids know that. Um, and uh, we definitely spend uh, time making sure that we have our renewed relationship and that we have a path together moving forward. So like I said, the outline of today, uh, the way that we will do it, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview on how um, everything is set up, how the DEN system is set up. Um, then we will go through math and science in particular. Mr. Suderman will take you through there. Um, so he, uh, Jared will take you a walk through that. Uh, and then there'll be a break for a question period. So if you have something specific to math and science, that gives you an opportunity to ask those questions. You can put them in the chat um, if you want. Um, and you can or you can um, put up your hand and we'll get to them at the end. The, then we'll go into Mr. Bradshaw. Owen will talk about English and social studies. And uh, then I will talk about the advocate system after that. And then uh, Lorraine Marie O'Connor will talk a little bit about the student support services um, that we offer here at school. So there's a, we'll break each time for questions just so we don't have to remember our questions from the hour that uh, that started. We it should take us hopefully about an hour, um, depending on the questions and the conversation, but um, that's how we'll get started. So our DEN system, uh, as you know, the kids are in, you know, two teachers for their four core courses. This is our, um, the groupings we have. So um, DEN 3 and 4 are Jared and Owen. Um, and, but our, our DEN team is, um, is a very tight knit group um, of colleagues that work together um, for, on many things. So you'll see just the English, um, the English social studies group get together in order to um, plan something that's very content uh, specific. You'll see each one, uh, each DEN partner talk about kids um, and how they can cross curricular teach uh, that way. So it is a very um, dynamic group and a tight knit group um, to be part of the DEN system here at Glenlawn is, is, a, is a good place to be. So that's, uh, that's the group of teachers that we have this year. Many, there is only one that has not been in the DEN system prior to. So, uh, so it's a good group. So we're here mostly to talk about assessment um, and just learn a little bit about how we do things at Glenlawn here. Um, the one thing that that you'll notice um, differently than you may have seen in grade seven and eight is that we will not um, we will not use percentage grades until the very end. So we found that percentages are not telling the story of what a child knows um, and what they are um, and how they can articulate their own learning. So they um, and they we want kids to be able to understand the skill set they need to work on versus the skill sets that they're good at, as opposed to getting an 80 percent or an 85 or 72 that are somewhat arbitrary. Um, where there is a disconnect sometimes is if those um, if those types of if there is a system or a goal setting system that your kids have that is centered around a percentage grade, that's something that will have to be altered because it just won't work. So if they um, if there is either a reward system or something where they, they are um, feeling like they have to reach a certain percentage to get something then or to feel like they've achieved a goal they've set for themselves. We, we um, work with kids to, to set other goals that talk about outcome um, attainment or skill based attainment in order to reach those goals. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about how you how we're going to know how kids are doing along the way. So on the report cards, there's four reporting periods. Um, so and these full year courses. So if your kids are in, um, which they are, either in phys ed or an elective this term, those are semesters. So no, the November reporting is a halfway mark. Um, but in these full year courses and their den classes, you'll this is only a quarter the way along, not even a quarter actually, but. So we report differently along the way. So in November, you'll see on the report card, it's important that you read the comments. The comments are the only thing that's going to tell your story for you. Um, so it'll talk about their uh, personal and social comments. So it'll talk about the things that we're working on around independence, some of their the skill sets um, that they're working on in order to be able to sort of do school, quote unquote, kind of thing. Um, the the talk a little bit about the stuff that they're working on from home versus at school. So those are uh, just elements of this year that are a little bit different. And then in January, you'll see academic comments. So you'll see uh, things like they've attained seven out of eight outcomes, uh, things like that. They'll attain a, a four on a scale that uh, Owen will tell you about in a little bit. So you'll see both of those types of things on that report card. 
in April, you'll see mainly just academics, where, where they are academically as opposed to some of the other skills are working on it around independence and mastery um, as well. So they're, uh, so you'll see just academic there. And then in June, you'll sort of see the full meal deal again, just like you did in January. So um, that's what it will look like. Um, but those four reporting periods um, are just that. They're only four stops in the road um, that Man Manitoba Education uh, has us do. Uh, that is not and should not ever be the only communication that is happening with your child and their teachers. That can be happening all of the time. So um, that back and forth, emails, calls, those types of things, you can absolutely reach out anytime. Uh, we'd be more than happy to to have a conversation sooner than later if there's a concern or or even if things are going great, it's okay to have those conversations as well. Um, the from a tech standpoint, so all of our courses are delivered uh, through OneNote and Teams this year um, and their Office 365. So everybody's got their own computer. We spend a lot of time in the first few weeks just teaching kids how to use those devices and how to use the platforms in which we are set up. Of course, we are using Teams right off the bat this year, just in case we ever had to go to remote. I'm very happy to be having this conversation tonight after there being no changes on the announcement this afternoon. So that was a huge relief um, that we can continue on as business as usual. So um, so that is great. Um, uh, and so uh, if this is where you might need your kids sometime, and I know some of you right now are logged in as your child, so that's fantastic um, that they can help walk through. And I would encourage you to have them walk through their their teams and, and have them show you kind of um, what it looks like from their eyes. So we will also, this recording is also going to be put in their teams so that parents can go in and, and, um, and watch this as well. So yeah, so that's... Um, that's how we do mostly there is still paper there's still paper that exists um, but most of it is electronic for sure so our math teachers um, this is our crew um, that uh, spend a ton of time together planning um, giving each other ideas it's a very dynamic group of expertise um, for sure um, and years of experience. So, and on obviously on this uh, particular meeting, our highlight, of course, is Jared Suderman. So he will um, he will be next up. So I will shut off my video and I will turn it over to Jared. Right on. Thank you very much, Dion. Uh, hopefully, you can all hear me. So my name is Jared Suderman. Hi there. Uh, sitting here in my classroom, uh, we're just going to talk quickly about our math and science course courses. So first of all, on your screen, you see kind of just the, the big idea literacies as they relate to both our math and science courses. So there's not a whole lot that we can speak to, but th this is kind of the overarching ideas that we are going to talk about in both math and science. Uh, each of the math and science teachers that across the grade nine den system are going to differ on the pace of which they are uh, giving their courses, how they are necessarily delivering the, those courses and kind of the order in which uh, we go through them. Just like all of us in, in this room, we're each are different human beings. We, we each operate uh, differently, but however, all of the dens are going to kind of pick fruit from the same tree. So we're all going to take a look at outcomes that are in the, uh, the Manitoba curriculum. So just because one teacher might uh, take a look at something in a, from a little bit of a different vantage point, we all are teaching exactly the same outcomes. We're all picking fruit from exactly the same tree. Uh, these are the four topics that we're going to cover in grade nine science this year. We've already started our atoms and elements uh, unit. So th the particular order that these topics are listed is not very important, uh, but these are going to be the four. So we're going to take a look at reproduction, um, plant animal reproduction, asexual, sexual reproduction. We're going to take a look. Uh, we've just started looking at atoms and elements, taking a look uh, at the periodic table and how that's arranged and the, the atomic structure of the atom. Then we're going to take a look at electricity and, uh, and my personal favorite, taking a look at space and, and all the cool things that exist in, in our uh, solar system. 
And then these are the topics in math. Uh, we've gotten a pretty good start already on our number sense unit. And after number sense, we're going to move on to powers and exponents, uh, then to linear relations, polynomial, symmetry, and scale, and then similarity and surface area. Uh, so this is probably going to be the biggest difference uh, that a lot of us are going to experience coming from grade 7 and 8 into our grade 9 DEN system. We do everything in math and science uh, based on an outcome-based education. So what this means is that we take the outcomes listed by the Manitoba government curriculum document, and a few examples are at the uh, bottom there in blue. So uh, an example of a traditional math outcome, the one that we've already kind of looked at in, in class is showing an understanding of rational numbers by comparing and ordering rational numbers, and a science outcome of describing examples of how scientific knowledge has evolved in light of new evidence. So each of our assessments are chunked by that particular outcome or skill. So we don't necessarily chunk a whole bunch of different outcomes together in, in a unit test and test all of those things together. What we do is we uh, test the, the ability of students to do that particular skill. So can they show an understanding of rational numbers by comparing and ordering them? Um, and so that makes, in our opinion, and hopefully yours, the clarity on what your child is getting graded on and what skill or skills can they or can they not do. Um, it's pretty explicit, and, and hopefully that provides a whole lot of clarity. And uh, yeah, hopefully. Uh, so our focus in math and science is on the acquisition of skills. We don't focus on a particular grade or mark, just like uh, Ms. Deere has already alluded to. Uh, there is going to be no percentage grades on your child's report card until June, uh, just to help us focus on the acquisition of skills. So can we do the skills necessary to be successful uh, at grade nine math, grade 10 math, and so on? So uh, in each of our classes, we are going to have regular formative assessments. Those are things that students do to, to develop their learning. So I, I really like the metaphor of practice. Uh, so the, the regular formative assessments are, are practice before the big game. And then the summative assessments are that big championship game. Can we go out and can we be successful in those particular skills? And then we uh, set a benchmark of 70% on a summative assessment for students to strive for and say that, hey, I can be successful at these skills. Because if you can do something 70% of the time or more, the, the likelihood of, of you knowing what you're doing is pretty high. And we use a common analogy of that of a driver's test. So if you want to liken um, the, the math outcomes or science outcomes that we look at to, let's say, parallel parking or turning right, uh, merging in traffic, uh, those are the skills that we're looking at. So it, it's going to be a check mark um, type of system where can you parallel park your car? You can, here's a check mark, let's move on to the next skill. Uh, some of the benefits of outcome-based education is that they highlight uh, student progress and uh, gaps that, that they still might have because now we can clearly and explicitly see, hey, can we do this skill? And, and hopefully that clarity really uh, helps to highlight a student's progress. And it also identifies what they're good at and, and informs me of what they still need some work on. And as well, this checklist that we're building throughout the year then helps us inform um, our decision for grade 10 math. Because what we do is, particularly in math, uh, we break down those outcomes for the stream that, uh, that your children are going to go into for grade 10. So if you see on that screen over there, that, that highlighted bolded E on the left-hand side, uh, that is what that stands for in my class is that everybody is doing that skill. And there's a particular uh, bit of outcomes that are only going to be for students that uh, self-identify that they want to go into the intro to applied and pre-cal course in grade 10. So we, we 
provide opportunity for students to, uh, to inform their choice based on uh, whether or not they have done the skills that are going to make them successful at the grade 10 level as well. Uh, so again, Ms. Deer uh, talked about communication and how we're going to be communicating with you. Uh, I am certainly open to communicating with parents and students as, as often and as, as you want, and, and we can carry on that conversation throughout the year. It's, it's not just going to be on a report card in November that, uh, that we can communicate. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns at any time, you can always email me, uh, call the school. Most of the communication that, uh, that we, I have to students is, is through OneNote and Teams, and then as well in person um, while they're in class. But a lot of the delivery system is done through OneNote and Teams. And then if you, you want, you can access our Glenlong Twitter and website there as well uh, for kind of bigger school uh, communications. Uh, Jared, I am going to move to the next slide, but do you want to show them Finn? It looks like you're petting Finn. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's right <laughs> can, here. Can you move your thing and just show everybody yeah. Finn? There's Finn. There he is. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, look, look. Yeah. Shy. Oh, you wondering where? Yep, <laughs> that's Finn. Okay, I'm going to move to the next slide. <laughs> oh, right on. Uh, some of the learning behaviors that we're going to... Whoa, that's too high. Uh, some of the learning behaviors that we are going to comment on, especially in our upcoming report card in November, uh, are just some of these soft skills that we hope to build into students so that they, be, that they can be uh, successful, not just uh, in grade nine at Glenlawn, but in grade 10, 11, 12, and then in their future endeavors. So things like belonging and independence. And uh, we, in my particular class and, and in Owens as well, I, I'm sure he's gonna speak to it, is we really have a big focus on growth mindset and just believing that if with enough hard work, we can get better at stuff. Um, I will never be LeBron James, but if I work hard, I can probably improve my, my free throw shooting. Um, and, and so that's what it, definitely a focus in, in the course courses. Uh, so just segueing into growth mindset, um, by grade nine, a lot of students unfortunately have already decided whether they are good at math or science. And we, we kind of highlight the word decided there because in my opinion, uh, that, that's a choice, maybe not a conscious choice, but uh, it's certainly a choice of whether or not they are good or bad at math and science. And so what we do is we kind of flip the language. And, and I think that language is really important. And so rather than saying that math is easy or math is hard, we shift the language to math might be familiar to me or might be unfamiliar to me. And there might be aspects of math that are familiar to me and other aspects that might be unfamiliar. Uh, and it's not me uh, against students or me versus students. It's myself and students together, we're going to kind of go against math and see what we can learn, how we can be successful. And I just ask, uh, the, one of the biggest helps that, that I can ask from parents and guardians is please just model uh, and encourage openness to learning. That is one of the biggest helps that you can have from home. Um, and don't normalize being bad at math or science. Uh, rarely, if ever, would somebody say, well, my child probably isn't going to be very Reading because I'm not very good at reading, but for whatever reason, we seem as a society to have normalized, well, I'm not going to be very good at math, or sorry, my child isn't going to be very good at math because I was never good at math. So try to change that language, try to change our thinking around uh, math and uh, using a growth mindset to, to just be better at, at things with some hard work and, and effort. And that's it, that's I think. It. Okay, um, are there any questions um, at the moment? Uh, you can use your raise your hand uh, tool or you can type something in the chat. I'll give it some awkward pause time <laughs> <laughs> while I wait. See if That's always anything. the best, eh? Yeah, virtually is always even worse. Um, okay, we can, we can definitely move on if there is no questions. 
You can feel okay. free to type in your questions in the chat, even if uh, you know we go on and you can still ask them and then I can uh, answer them in the chat or later on as well. Perfect, thanks Jared. Okay, um, so our next group of um, staff that work in the DEN system, of course, is our English and Social Studies teachers. Um, so again, a, a dynamic group. Um, all of these teachers have uh, been in, in the DEN system in previous years and all bring um, certainly a different uh, skill set uh, and they make a, a fantastic team together. So uh, today's star of the show, obviously, is Owen. Um, so I will turn it over to him. All right, thank you so much, Dion. Thank you, Jarrett. Um, thank you, parents, guardians, for joining us this evening. It's wonderful to have you with us. Uh, obviously, we wish we could have you here, but uh, but we really appreciate you joining us and coming and seeing a little bit of the places and people that your uh, wonderful children spend so much time uh, with every day uh, throughout the year. So thank you for them. I just want to actually start by echoing something that, uh, that Jarrett was saying about growth mindset. Um, I know that for students, a lot of the time they see their teachers doing things that they're really good at because that's the sort of things we decide to to teach. And um, you know, for me, I get an uh, almost daily opportunity to demonstrate my growth mindset around technology because, uh, unlike Jarrett, I, I am not one of our division's tech gurus. Uh, but I know that every day, uh, through trial and error, every day with a little bit of help from Jarrett, every day with a little bit of help from my students, from your kids, uh, I am learning and getting better and and working forward at it. And, uh, and, and this idea of growth mindset, not that we're all going to get to the same place, but that we're all going to get better together, that we're all by putting in our best effort, uh, going to learn and grow and make progress from the point at which we started. That's probably one of the biggest ideas. We spent uh, some time talking about that in the first week or two of class, because it's one of those foundational ideas that we build the year off of. Now, this first slide, uh, which probably makes more sense when we do this parent night in the middle of September than in the middle of October, just tells you a little bit about what we've been up to early on, getting to know our kids, having our kids get to know one another, get to know us, get to know the building, um, you know, meeting our library staff, uh, meeting the folks who make all the many uh, important things happen in the building that are, are above and beyond our classrooms. These are things we've been up to over the last couple of weeks. It's starting to really feel like um, we're here, we've gotten to know one another, we're into October now and we're starting to be able to make some forward progress in the content areas of our courses. Uh, but these foundations of just establishing a sense of belonging, es establishing a place where the kids feel like they belong uh, and like they're connected uh, is so incredibly important to us. And we know it's really important uh, to our students, uh, even if they don't necessarily always uh, fess up to the fact that belonging at school is something that really matters to them. Um, in social studies and English language arts, we uh, have what we would say are four core literacies, uh, four core outcomes, uh, four core skill sets, if you will. Um, these inform most of the decision making that we do as teachers. These inform all, most of the learning opportunities that your students engage in throughout the, the year. Uh, we are deeply, deeply, deeply invested uh, in your students, our students becoming better readers, writers, and thinkers, becoming better citizens. We think that these skill sets here, which are sort of at the core of the social studies and English language arts curriculums, are key skills for them to take away. And so these are things that we're going to work at throughout the year. Um, in social studies, there is some, certainly some content as well, everything from political geography to some of the structures of parliament and structures of how government works and things around uh, immigration and citizenship and things like that. So there's certainly some content there, uh, but the two courses are actually very heavily skill driven. And one of the things that has happened uh, over the last few years as we've put the two courses together into a 10 month course is I think that that, that trend of the courses towards being skill driven uh, just it, it continues to accelerate and we continue to see as teachers just more and more opportunities to work on these core skills uh, and so these are uh, really very much at the heart of what we're doing every day with your students. 
Um, these are, uh, as I alluded to, some of the, the topics that we will get into in uh, social studies, some of the areas where we get a chance to practice those skills, but also uh, some areas where there is some content and some substance uh, that we're going to be working at learning so that we have things to think about, we have things to practice our skills with. Um, English language arts, again, these are the four uh, big outcomes. And, and if I could just highlight on this page, um, we're looking at these outcomes from two angles. Uh, the, the darker, the black text is talking about us as consumers of text, as readers, as viewers, as listeners, as experiencers, uh, whereas the red is talking about us as we develop some of these key core skills in our own writing, in our own speaking, in our own representing. So that, that's sort of what that's about. It's four core skills, but we look at them both as creators of text and also as consumers of text. Um, in English and social studies, we uh, share with our colleagues in math the uh, desire not to have the fixation be about marks. We are all about learning. We are all about telling your kids what they're doing well, and we're all about telling them ways and places where they can work to do even better. Um, we have decided over the last three years uh, to work essentially with the same scale that they've used in the K to six years, uh, which is say the ND through four scale. So students and parents are getting uh, in January, in April, uh, a sense of where your students are at, a sense of where things are going uh, without us getting obsessed over, uh, you know, tenths of decimal places around percentages. So students who are in the ND range, those are uh, in all likelihood students where we've had conversations with home, where we're talking, we're working, we're supporting to see how can we help you to make more progress. In the one, two range, we're seeing some progress. And the question is, how can we see more uh, as we head towards the three, four range? You know, things are happening as we would hope they would be happening in, in the grade, grade nine level, uh, but the question still remains, how can we push you along to do more, to do better? We wanna celebrate the strengths uh, of all of our students, but we also always wanna ask the question, what's next? Okay, so we will break again for a second for questions. Any thoughts or questions around the English social studies side of things or something you thought about with uh, math or science? Or just a question for either one of the teachers? Okay. Um, I will continue to move along. Um, all right. So I'll just talk a little bit about the advocate system. Mr. Bradshaw, you, oh, he did. <laughs> he didn't have to write him. Um, the uh, advocate system. So the way, so first thing is learning all the different language at Glenlawn. So by the time you get this all figured out, we'll be in grade 10, but we have our dens and we have our advocates. So our advocates, um, this is the group and some of them are in the um our grade nine teachers as well and some of them are not um so your children will all be matched with an advocate the matching of an advocate to a child is is none too specific other than alphabetical to do this um but that relationship that we're hoping that is built between their advocate is just yet another adult in this in the school that they um, may find a connection with. We uh, the more adults we can bring into a child's life, the more likelihood that they will connect and find a safe adult in the mix somewhere. So whether that's myself or another administrator, their classroom teachers, student services, or their advocate, um, it's just uh, it's it's just making sure that we've kind of covered all bases. So this group we'll uh, meet with them they'll meet with them in november um, we always like to have the kids have an opportunity to talk about their report card and see their report card prior to any parent conference it's kind of like they get first kick of the can at like having that discussion and talking about goal setting and moving forward so they will meet with their advocate um, quickly in november for a 30 minute um, time that'll be within their class time so uh, they'll already be here at school so nothing to worry about organizational wise and then um, they'll also meet with their advocate in February to sign up for their courses for next year. So the, when we did this for grade nine, I went out to their elementary schools and did that for them. Now they're always going to do it with their advocate now that they're here at Glenlawn. 
so they so they have that relationship with them. Advocate checks in on them, sends them some emails sometimes, things like that. Um, and then at the end of the four years, uh, the advocate is the one that hands them their diploma. So it's really a nice moment, and hopefully um, we can continue to do that. And and grad is uh, kind of back to a non-COVID version by 2024. So um, so yeah, so that's the that's the advocate system. And that what when they this this group just finished with our last grade twelves. Um, they were the ones that seen our 20, uh, 2020 grads through. So now they're back down to pick up a new group and see them through until uh, until they graduate. Okay, and I'm going to let Lorraine Marie O'Connor, our student services teacher, speak to this slide and talk about the student supports we have here at Glenlawn. Okay, thanks. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Lorraine Marie O'Connor and I am the student services teacher for our grade nines. Um, this, as you can imagine, this takes uh, this role takes many forms. Right now, one of the focuses is getting into as many DEN classes as possible to engage in learning with our kids, to get to know them and their names and let them get to know me as well so that they're more comfortable coming maybe on a one on one situation. Uh, some of the other supports includes academic and classroom support. This takes many forms, so it includes being in the classroom, working with teachers and students. It includes uh, working one on one with kids in my office, in the den or in the library. And it also in can include making some planning for student learning needs with the classroom teacher and maybe the EA. Uh, another role is the counseling. And this can take many forms as well. So sometimes it's doing some mindful activities with kids, getting them ready to go into a class. It can be um, talking to kids about everything and anything that impacts their lives. Could be family, friends, social media, really anything. And then another thing is maybe developing some strategies to deal with some anxiety or other mental health that is impacting them. And we can work together on that. Uh, and then just generally, I like talking to kids. Uh, I'm encouraging kids and, you know, come and talk to me and we can talk about latest Netflix binge, books, movies. I can hold my own in most sports just to kind of get to know them. And even if it's just a pop by to tell me something fabulous that happened on the weekend, uh, I'm trying to get kids to, to do that more and more. So if you can do the same and emphasize that at home, that would be great. And then I just like to say that if you ever have any questions or concerns, um, I'm an email or a phone call away, so don't hesitate. And then just thank you for coming out tonight. Awesome, thank you, Lorraine Marie. Um, and she is uh, definitely wanting kids to stop by. She, <laughs> when you come out of the classroom into student services, even after a number of years, uh, there is a you you miss you miss the kids. So, and then with the new ones, they don't stop by as often. They will by the time they're in grade twelve, but for now, they don't stop by as much. Um, okay, so just a reminder about the reporting. Um, there is this is we've seen this slide already, but just a reminder of what you're going to expect to see in November. If there's information that you feel that is missing from that report card, absolutely make sure you sign up for a parent conference. We'll get those that information out to you um, on how to do that, um, how to how to let that both um, Owen and Jared know that you're that you're wanting to talk to them, and then they'll set up something uh, either over the phone or uh, or a meeting like this, um, and you'll have an opportunity to get, gain any clarity or anything um, that you're not finding from the report card. All right, and that's the last slide. So, any questions, comments, um, that anything that we you'd like clarity on before we end this meeting? Maybe it's like the kids when we record the meetings, nobody wants to talk to them. <laughs> okay, then um, absolutely reach out to any of us at any time. You have my email address as well, um, and you can contact me at any point. Um, Jared, Owen, and Lorraine Marie are, are available as well. Uh, and if uh, there's anything that comes up moving forward, let us know. And otherwise, I, we really appreciate you coming out. It's very nice to have people here um, and uh, make sure that uh, that we can that help uh, clear anything up and make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of uh, the village it takes to raise these teenagers. So um, thank you all very much, and I hope you enjoy this uh, upcoming weekend. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everybody.